Um, we are going to have several of the young men doing a couple different things as uh, we get started here. And uh, I'm going to kick us off, though. So we're going to start with song number 508. If you'll turn your songbook, you're getting your songbook tonight. We'll start with number 508. <clears throat> Let's sing. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, a wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock, that shadows a dry thirsty Master of everything, 
one more. I'm going to hand things over. <laughs> number three. Let's turn to number three. <clears throat> Let's sing. Alleluia, praise Jehovah, from the heavens praise His name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all His angels praise, proclaim, all His hosts together praise Him, sun and moon and stars on high. singing um, 555 five, five. seek ye first 555 five, five. seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you singing all Psalm 119, verses 101 through 105. 
I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep thy word. I have not turned aside from thine audience, for thou thyself hast taught for me. How sweet are thy words to my taste, yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. From thy percepts I get unto this sturdy, this standing, therefore I hate every false way. None thy word is lamp to my feet, and a light to my path. Will you all bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us gather here on this beautiful day to worship your name. Watch over us as we go and make our decisions. Make sure you guide us in the right ways. Watch over us throughout our weeks and protect us. Please help the people fighting for our freedom. Watch over the people that are sick in the hospitals. Just watch over us as we go out through our lives. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. First song will be number 578. 578. Let's say We will glorify the King of Kings. We will
will be reading from Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 3 through 6. The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. I will build you up again, and you, virgin Israel, will be rebuilt. Again, you will take up your timbrels and go out to dance with the joyful. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hill of Samaria. The farmers will plant them and enjoy their fruit. There will be a day, there will be a day when watchmen cry out, On the hills of Ephraim, come let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. Number 902. Let's sing. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
Um, today I'll be talking about David and Goliath and how this magnificent story shows us how God chooses us to do the great things. If you would please turn with me to 1 Samuel 17, verse 8. I'll be reading verse 8 and going through 11. Then he stood out and cried to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine? Am I, am I, are, are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our ser servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Goliath challenges the Israelites to choose a man to fight him. What type of man should they pick? A warrior, someone of great strength, or Saul himself? All of these things would make sense from a logical perspective. God, however, has different plans. God often has different plans. He often chooses us to do things in ways we do not expect. He often tests us to see if we would trust him or choose him instead of ourselves and our own strength. Now I'll be reading verse 12 and following. Now David was the son of the Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and whom had eight sons, and all who was old in advanced years in the days of Saul. The three oldest sons of Jesse had gone to follow Saul to the battle. The names of these three sons were, who went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, next to him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest, and the three all oldest followed Saul. But David occasionally went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep to, at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near and present, presented himself for forty days, morning and evening. Have you ever had a problem that would not go away? How quickly do we usually want God to help us? Most of the time, we want things to be done immediately. We want to be, everything to be fixed right away. We want him to fix it our way. For 40 days, the Israelites have cowered in fear because of Goliath. They have not prayed, they have not asked God, and they have not sought the Lord's help. It is if, as if they don't even know who God is. Even worse, Saul, who should be doing these things, seems to hide in his palace as if the situation will just go away. Saul fails to seek God. The result of this could be disastrous, catastrophic even. If Goliath prevails, God's people would be conquered. Fortunately, God never abandons his people and always has a plan for their deliverance, often in ways that cannot be predicted. In verse 26, it says, David asked the men standing near him, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Then in 32, it says, David said to Saul, Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Even though David is volunteering, God is choosing him for this very special job that everyone else has failed to speak up on. Let us consider these events and God's hand in them. David is a young boy, not a warrior. He is a shepherd, not a soldier. But he has one thing nobody has, the power of God. David, unlike Saul, trusts in God and has the ability to communicate with God. Saul has little knowledge of God and has to have priests before him so he can know God's will. This proves to be a substantial advantage for David and a devastating flaw for Saul. Because of David's faith, God is able to use him to fight for Israel while everyone else flees. In verse 33, it says, Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or, bear, or a bear came and carried off his sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned to me, I seized it by its hair and struck it and killed it. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Many times people are confused about the people God chooses to do his will. They are either too young, too old, too inexperienced, you name it. Like the Apostle Paul, who had formerly persecuted the Lord's people, God ultimately chose him to be one of the foremost defenders of faith in the first century, a man whose legacy and work continues to guide and inspire the church today. David's faith that God had delivered him from the lion and the bear and ultimately Goliath shows more faith 
than we see from anyone in Israel. Faith that would, would ultimately be the deciding factor in who God would choose to deliver his people. After all, we learn in Hebrews 11.6 that without faith it is impossible to please God. In verse 40, it says, Then he took his staff in his hand, cho chose five stu smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Meanwhile, the Philistine with the shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked da David over and saw that he was little more than a young boy, glowing with health and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, I am a dog that you come at me with sticks, and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. Here David chooses weapons of war that are not what he should have used. As Goliath said, really, sticks and stones you're go you are going to use against me? What Goliath didn't understand that was that God plus sticks and stones equals more than enough. David, with his staff and his five stones, would prove a formidable force. Then in 45, it says, David said to the Philistine, Come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied this day. The Lord will deliver you into my hands, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head this very day. I will give the carcasses of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all into your hands. As the Philistines moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet him. Reaching into his bag and taking out a, a stone, he slung it and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone without a sword in his hand, and struck the Philistine and killed him. I'll be reading verse 47 again. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you all into your hands. The battle is the Lord's. He has chosen us for the greatest mission on earth. Like David, we must have the faith to trust in God will deliver us. God will never leave us nor forsake us, no matter how difficult the task. Whether we face Goliath or being down two runs in the ninth inning with their worst batter up to bat, God will deliver. May God bless you as you choose him. If we can help you in any way, please come as we stand and sing. Number 934. <coughs> Number 934. <clears throat> Softly and tender.
Come.